Okay, so in this video, we're going to be backing up the Edge Switch 8 150 watt PoE switch. First thing you do, you take off the cover. The way you do that is you remove the two screws from behind here, the two black screws. And then you're going to want to slide this out. And you see these, uh, I don't know what you call those, these, you know, catches right here. Those are, you're going to want to make sure those are, are free. So you're going to slide it out about an inch and you're going to wiggle it until these, um, these catchers, you know, release. And you're going to want to be careful because there is a cable here connected. So lift it gently until, you know, you can see that and reach this cable. And then you're going to want to, you know, flick this, this out and you're going to unplug the LED cable. So. That is step one. After that, we're going to remove these four screws here. You got one, two, three, four on each corner. And we're going to disconnect the power connector and this console connector right here. Now that the PCB is free from the chassis, which you can see over here, this is what it looks like. You, I disconnected these two cables, removed these four screws, and you can see also some thermal pads right here, some silicone thermal pads, plus, you know, some beefy, you know, heat sinks there. And to access the SPI flash, you're going to want to turn it over. And right there, that chip right there with the paint, MXIC, that is your SPI flash. That's where the operating system and bootloader and all that stuff is stored. Also, let me move this to the side. You're going to want to wire up your FlashCat USB. Here I'm using the FlashCat USB Classic. The Pro and the Export will also do the trick. So the Export with a SBI adapter or, you know, and you're going to want to wire up your, uh, your, your test clip. Uh, you know as per the instruction manual so you got the VCC which here which you see here in red the ground is the black the SI you connect to the SO the SO to the SI the SCLK to the SCK the CS to the CS the WP and the um, hold so WP and hold you don't actually have to connect those all the time but just for good measure, you're going to want to connect those. The WP stands for write protect, and that's how you disable write protect on the chip. The hold uh, halts the boot. You know, like if the, the chip is powered on, you know, it'll halt the boot process. So I think that's what the hold does. Anyway, so just pay attention right here to your SI, your, your I'm sorry, your S SPI chip. See that circle indicating pin 1? That circle right there, that's going to be the side where you want to connect the VCC to, right there on pin 2. That's going to be where you connect the VCC. So, just going to go like this. And this is the red. The VCC is the red. So, that's going to be on this side. And we're going to want to just open it up. And you're going to clamp down on it. And just like that, it is connected. So that's how you connect the Pomona chip. And now you're going to connect the FlashCat to your computer and see if it's detected. If it's not, you're going to want to wiggle it, you know, squeeze it, put it, you know, squeeze the legs, you know, make sure it's on nice and um, nice and firm and the, the pins are making contact with the little legs right there. So uh, that's the next step. Okay, so now I have the FlashCat connected to the USB cable on my computer. And you can see a couple lights. You got the red light. That means there's power. And the blue light means that the um, software is open right now. If there's no light, that's fine. That means the software is closed. And also when it's blinking, that means that the data um, is flowing. Uh, you know, it's uh, activity. All right. So everything looks good. And looks like we were, the chip was detected successfully. I'm going to just go ahead and redetect for a second right there. So I'm going to redetect and perfect also you're just going to want to make sure you're in SBI nor flash mode and you want to make sure you have the SBI um, version of the firmware so you see serial program interface SBI mode and the latest firmware if um, I'm not going to get into how to update the firmware in this video 
Uh, maybe in the comments below, if you guys have problems with that, you know, I'll help you with it. So uh, you should see a new tab pop up if, if your device was detected successfully. And in here you can read, you can write. Uh, these are all, you know, full flash dumps, you know, so you, or you can choose from where to start and where to end. So we can erase the flash, you can compare the flash, and here you can, um, you know, edit the flash. This is the new beta versions where you can edit actually the, the, the hex data here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a full backup. And we're going to, you know, start from zero and we're going to go all the way to the end. So we were just going to say, okay. So that's going to create a full flash backup and we're going to store that in downloads. And we're going to save. We're going to leave the default file name. And we're going to wait for that to finish. Okay, so this is nearly complete. Okay, so now that that's complete, we're going to go ahead, just for good measure, and we're going to compare the dump we just got. So it's going to read that dump, and it's going to compare it to what's on the flash, and it's going to tell us if the dump we have and the flash chip data match. So that's one way of verifying that you have a successful, you know, dump. Okay, the compare just finished and we got 100% match so we can with confidence know that we have a successful, you know, full flash dump. And now you can go, you know, you can go crazy. You can, you know, erase the chip and you can, you can do whatever you want because now you have a full backup and in case you brick it. Um, I guess that's it. I'm going to probably go into, you know, a little bit more on how to update the firmware in your flash cat, which is... Um, you know, sometimes a little tricky, so. Okay, so to update the firmware in your flash cat, you're gonna wanna make sure that switch number two, I don't know if I can get this to zoom. Let's see if I can get that to zoom. Come on, zoom. Uh, maybe if I pull it back a bit. And down, maybe. Okay, yeah, you see that switch? right here it's gonna be number one and number two you're gonna want to make sure number two oh, come on focus focus there we go so you're gonna want to make make sure number two is off or in the down position and let me power on my flash cat all right for a second okay so it's powered on right now and you're going to want to hit the reset button right here. That's the reset button right there. That. And when the flash cat resets, you're going to see no lights. And it's going to be boot, booted into AVR firmware. This will allow you to update the firmware or change it to like uh, to a different version, you know, a different mode. So in this case, we're going to use the, you can do the SWI, the SBI, or the JTAG. So we're going to do the SBI flash again. It already has this flash. And you're going to say open. So you select it. And then you're going to say program. And then start application. So now you have the 4.43 version of the SBI firmware flash onto your flash cat. And Sometimes you're going to need to do that every time you download the latest version of the uh, software. It might tell you, hey, you know, please update your firmware. So you're going to do that. You're going to, you know, make number, make sure number two is off. Push the reset button and come here to the AVR tab and flash your firmware. You can leave number two off. The, the only thing that changes is the behavior, what happens when you press the reset button. By default, you know, if number two is on, it will just reset, reset the FlashCat USB. If you leave it down and you push the reset button, it'll um, reset into bootloader mode, allowing you to flash a new version of the firmware onto the uh, FlashCat. And that's it for today. Hope this was informational, you know. Alrighty.